Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to this quick overview about the operating system that I choose to install on my Linux computer, my, my custom HTPC and all the small configurations and more editings that I did to the operating system. So I decided to go with Ubuntu GNOME, the GNOME edition, because um, it was like the easiest entry point for me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how really to explain it, but it feels kind of natural. I always like the GNOME desktop environment and Ubuntu, I think it's a good solution in a matter of um, easy of use. Like I'm not a pro Linux user. I have no idea how to configure Arch properly. I am not, I'm like I'm an average Linux enthusiast, so I don't have the skill set, I don't have the time to spend too much time in configuring and writing uh, and installing all the things that I need. So Ubuntu as a pretty decent uh, package manager as uh, all the uh, most famous distribution, all the most famous softwares are available for Ubuntu. It's easy to use. It's an easy access point for uh, a new user that is, is trying to switch to Linux. So probably in the future, I'm going to try other distributions and other stuff. But for now, I'm mostly... Um, focused on the actual software or what I can do with the machine, not how not how much time I can spend on setting up my environment because I I don't really care about that. I want to work on this computer. No, I don't want to spend time in just like setting up Linux forever. So that's why I decided to go with that. So I'm currently running Ubuntu 17.04 with the latest GNOME uh, desktop environment that is the 3.24 and it's pretty good. It's looking pretty good. As you know, this probably is slightly different from you expect to be the GNOME edition. And let's take a look at what I did and how I changed all the settings. So first of all, I um, I changed the GTK theme to Numix, that it's by default is already there. Uh, Aduaita, it's kind of like too big, too uh, clunky. It's kind of weird with all those like gradients and stuff. So I went to Numix. I'm not a big fan of this like black bar, but I kind of like how it works and how it looks um, for like the file manager, the now little file manager. And it's it's good. It's it's fast. Um, it's not intrusive as it was. I was a feeling it was Adwaita, so it's pretty good. I went with the uh, paper icon pack. I didn't try many icon packs. I was trying to find something flat, simple, not flashy, with without like reflections or or like hard edges or stuff like that. So it looks pretty decent. I like this kind of system. Of course, sometimes you encounter like everywhere else or encounter some softwares that are not, um, th there's not an icon available for it, but it's, it's totally fine. And uh, then I implemented some extensions to change the look and the behavior of my GNOME desktop environment. The most obvious one that you can notice is the dash to dock extension. And this is really familiar for me because I've been using Mac OS for a lot of years. So now I always try to reach, it's sort of like a muscle memory, I reach down to the dashboard or to the dock to launch my applications of the most used application. Or I really like the fact that I can launch the application through the search. That it's kind of like similar to Spotlight or to Alfred, the one that was using on Mac OS. So um, as I said, I set up this environment to look and act in a familiar way, something that I don't have to relearn from scratch. Other than that, I install a bunch of like commonly used software that you know. In my favorite list, we have like the Chromium web software, Sublime Text, the standard GNOME terminal, Gravit Designer that I'm trying to use. And I'm trying to see if it's a good alternative solution. I like that it's local. I can use it locally. I install Steam and then this is the standard software. Uh, I don't have any crazy other stuff other like a PDF mod. Um, 
graphic like the usual stuff, Darktable, GIMP, Inkscape, and the LibreOffice, these are the default stuff of uh, GNOME. I install Skype because of course I have to talk with my parents through Skype. That's the standard, probably I'm gonna remove it because I don't think I'm gonna ever use it here. Uh, FileZilla for file transfer, Dropbox for uh, my backup online, Office stuff like the default office stuff. I implemented a bunch of PDF uh, specific software because PDF is a proprietary extension from Adobe. So they're like, you need some specific unique software in order to use it properly. It's kind of annoying. Uh, just Sublime Text for programming. I'm gonna do a separate video on how I set up my Sublime Text editor, how I make it look and work as the way I want. And that's it. Spotify, of course, for music. OBS, Open Broadcaster, is the software that I'm using right now to record this. And um, these are just standard stuff, nothing, nothing special. System tool. For the system tool, I install also the SC controller. That it's it's kind of good. Basically, I'm gonna use this HTPC to. Um, use it as a home theater device. So I'm gonna play games, that's why I install Steam and I already downloaded and tried some games and they work like pretty smoothly, it's like no complaint. I'm gonna use the Steam controller and an Xbox One controller to play these games. So um, most of the times, these controllers work out of the box directly with Steam and especially like Linux recognizes these through the Bluetooth, so no problem or through the cable. But sometimes there are some ma mapping issues like the left handle or the right buttons are not mapped properly or are inverted. So this software is really good because you have some default configuration that recognize your pad and you can assign some specific unique behavior behavior to the um to specific keys if you want to change what the a key does or what the handle if you want to invert the handle if you have issues with the default settings of uh, your controller you can change it you can remap it by default the only annoying thing is that if you need to use it you need to open this and leave it open you cannot close it if you close it it's not gonna work. So you just open this, you hide it, and that's it. It remains there, but it needs to remain open. That's the only annoying part, but other than that, it's pretty good, and it solves a lot of remapping issues for the controllers that probably are not fully supported sometimes. Another small settings that I did was uh, extending the GNOME terminal and installing Oh My Z Shell. If you don't know Oh My Z Shell, I strongly suggest you check it out. It's easily installable pretty much on every terminal and it extends a lot the functionalities of the terminal. It adds a lot of aliases, out of completion. It's easy to customize. You can install uh, some specific themes to um, speed up your workflow. I really like it. It's really lightweight. It works perfectly everywhere and it was like really easy to install it on Linux. So I strongly suggest you to do it. Other than that, this is a pretty standard and not really customized GNOME installation. And I strongly suggest you to do kind of the same. If you're new to Linux, you don't really know what to do and you have not really idea uh, how to actually use Linux in a different way from like Windows or Mac OS. So just use it as a standard, like pick um, operating system, pick a desktop environment. In my case, I picked Ubuntu and GNOME as a desktop environment and just stick with that. Don't try to heavily customize it from the get-go, but like immediately uh, before even uh, getting acquainted, getting like confident with that uh, desktop environment because you risk to just break it and not even kind of enjoying the default experience that the developers of that operating system and desktop environment wanted to give you, wanted to give to the users. So that's pretty much it. It was a really, really quick overview video about my settings and how I decided to set up GNOME and it's it's looking pretty good for me. It's pretty simple, pretty standard. 
as you, as I said in the previous videos, my computer is not like super high hand. I'm keeping everything on the low key. I don't want something like super cutting edge or powerful, no overclocking, nothing, nothing special. So I decided to go with a really simple installation, not super crazy. And in next videos, I'm gonna show you how to set up a fully functional development environment in Linux because that's one of the most beautiful part of owning a Linux computer or working on Linux is setting up a development environment or whatever you want, setting up something. It's just like so open, so easy to install stuff and just like you can properly configure it uh, however you want for your needs and you won't have any problem in solving issues and changing the machine the way you want. So thank you so much guys for checking this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and I talk to you in the next one.